During the 90s and noughties, the chant of King Khan would regularly resound around stadiums across Germany. The royal nickname bore fitting tribute to the first-class goalkeeping talents and formidable frame of Oliver Kahn, who also became known as the Titan. After distinguishing himself on the field for more than 20 years, he retired from professional football in 2008. On the 15th of June 1969, Oliver Kahn was born in the German city of Karlsruhe. Karlsruhe is located in the country's southwest, near the French-German border. It has a population of over 288,000 people. Oliver made his professional debut for his hometown club Karlsruhe SC in 1987. And it wasn't long before he established himself as a quality keeper. He was signed by Bayern Munich at the start of the 94-95 season, after seven senior seasons at Karlsruhe. Munich paid a then record fee for a goalkeeper of more than 2 million euros. Despite suffering a ruptured cruciate ligament in his second season for the club, he still managed to display some formidable talent. Oliver would go on to win many honours at Bayern. But in those first few seasons, he was busy making a name for himself. He possessed an uncanny ability to save penalty kicks, and his imposing frame and style of play intimidated opposing forwards. He was named best Bundesliga goalkeeper in 1994, his first year with the club. However, his first major success came in 1997, when his team won the Bundesliga title. He took out the best Bundesliga goalkeeper title again, the first of another six straight wins. Oliver's presence on the team had helped turn Bayern's fortunes around. After finishing sixth during his first season at the club, they went on to win the title four times in the next six seasons. By the beginning of the 98-99 season, Oliver had established himself as the Bundesliga's best goalkeeper and was already stamping his mark on footballing history. Bayern won the Bundesliga again in 1999. It marked the start of a very successful period for Oliver Kahn. Bayern also made the Champions League final in 1999. They came face to face with the red-hot Manchester United outfit, who were attempting to become the first English team to complete the treble, having already won the Premier League and the FA Cup. Bayern played well and led 1-0 going into injury time. But unfortunately for Oliver and the team, United scored two goals in added time to steal the win. Bayern were no less successful the next season, in which they won the Bundesliga title and the German Cup, and won the Bundesliga title again to make it three in a row. 2001 was arguably the club's most successful season, with Oliver in goal. Not only did they claim the Bundesliga title, they also took out the Champions League Cup. Oliver's indispensability at the net was accentuated by his fantastic performance in the final. Bayern faced Spanish team Valencia, and when the match ended in a one-all draw, penalties were taken to decide the result. Oliver single-handedly won the match for his team by saving a number of penalties. His incredible performance earned him the Man of the Match award. The team finished third in 2002 before claiming another Bundesliga title in 2003. After injuries, personal problems and a lack of motivation marred his 03-04 season, there were rumours that he was considering leaving the club. Oliver neither confirmed nor denied that he was on his way out. As I said, there are always rumours and things one should think about if one is going to do something new. If one has the possibility, then one should think about them. But there are surely no concrete things. No, there are none. The rumours were soon dispelled when Oliver announced he would stay at the club and it wasn't long before King Khan was back. 
his performance has improved despite his advancing age. Munich remained successful in the following years, winning Bundesliga titles in 2005, 2006 and 2008. Kahn was racking up an impressive tally of matches. He played 128 times for Karlsruhe, and by the time he retired in 2008, he had made a total of 557 appearances in the Bundesliga, a record for a goalkeeper in the German league. He also retired as the all-time clean sheet leader in the history of the Bundesliga, with 197. The long list of club honours for Oliver Kahn includes an astonishing eight Bundesliga titles, six German Cups, six DFP Liga Pokal titles, a UEFA Cup, an Intercontinental Cup and a Champions League title. The success enjoyed by Bayern Munich during his tenure is rivalled by few teams in world sport. They dominated the league for over 10 years, from 97 to 2008. In the years they didn't win the title, 98, 02, 04 and 07, they finished second, third, second and fourth respectively, which represents a remarkable dominance over the league for more than a decade. After their successful 07-08 season, Oliver Kahn announced it was time for him to depart the club. He thanked the fans for their unwavering support. I would like to thank you for the entire season during which you accompanied us, during difficult moments and during great moments. You were always there to support us in all phases of this season. And we almost succeeded in getting all three titles. But I must say, this team with which I played this season, they have huge potential. I would like to thank the entire team for what they achieved together with you this season. Thank you. Thank you. Bayern were easily the dominant team of the Bundesliga. They also performed well in the Champions League giving them a strong reputation worldwide. Oliver Kahn also had a long and productive international career. He made his debut for the national side against Switzerland in June 1995. But it wasn't until Andreas Kopke retired after the 1998 World Cup that Kahn won the number one goalkeeper position. He was well into his prime when the 2002 World Cup came along. Expectations for the team weren't high coming into the tournament after some shaky performances in qualifying. However, Germany shrugged off any doubts about their game. After making it all the way to the final where they would face Brazil, Oliver had let in only one goal during the group stage. His shot-stopping prowess had caused headaches for opposition forwards and the world suddenly took notice of the Germans. They went on to the knockout stages and defeated Paraguay, United States and co-host Korea Republic, all with 1-0 victories. Brazil won all their games going to the final. However, German manager Franz Beckenbauer remained confident. So both teams, I think they deserve to be in the final. Brazil, they did win all six games. Germany did win five and one draw. So both teams, they deserve to be in the final. And I hope it will be a very exciting uh, final. Uh, sorry, Carlos, I hope you know, the German team will win the game, but uh, we, we have to wait and see. Maybe overtime, I don't know. Uh, but the most important thing is to show the whole world how good and how beauty football can be. Oliver would square up against the world's best line of attack in the form of Brazilian superstars Ronaldo, Ronaldinho and Rivaldo. But the staunch goalkeeper wasn't intimidated. Ja, wenn, man die, wenn man die Bilder aus der, aus der Heimat sieht, ist immer klar, gut, man bekommt hier nicht so extrem viel mit, weil... I've got a feeling telling me that we will be the world champions. I can't really explain why. Every one of us has to play the game of his life. They're probably the best team in the world in terms of individual players with exceptional people in every position. But the team with the most gifted players does not always win. Expecting a festival of fluent, attacking football on the Yokohama pitch might be too much to ask for. Finals are often decided on small things, sometimes luck. It may be that the teams will neutralise each other, like what happened in 1994. I have all due respect for Ronaldo, Ronaldinho and Rivaldo, who are fantastic players, but they still have to beat me. 
He had a right to be confident, having only conceded one goal for the whole tournament so far. He'd more than proved his worth. The first half went by without any goals. However, in the second half, the strong Brazilian attack lived up to their reputation. When Ronaldo scored two goals to sink the spirited Germans. It was Brazil's fifth World Cup win and the Germans' fourth runners-up trophy. Oliver had had a fantastic World Cup and won many accolades for his performance. Despite losing the final, Germany had done better than expected and the fans celebrated with the players after the match. Oliver Kahn became the first goalkeeper in history to win the golden ball as player of the tournament. The same year, he also finished runner-up in the FIFA World Player of the Year. With a strong result at the World Cup behind them, the team went on to Euro 2004 with high hopes, which came to naught after they were eliminated in the group stage. The next major focus for the team was the 2006 World Cup. There was even more pressure on the team than usual, given that Germany would be hosting the Cup. The upside for the Germans was that, as hosts, they qualified automatically. The local fans had high expectations of their team. Oliver Kahn felt a different type of pressure, as his position as captain was under threat. Soon enough, manager Jürgen Klinsmann announced that Michael Ballack would succeed Oliver Kahn as captain. Klinsmann explained to the media his reason for appointing Ballack as captain. Another important theme which I spoke to the players about, especially Oliver Kahn and Michael Ballack, is that Michael Ballack will be captain of the German national team and Oliver Kahn will be his deputy. For me, there is a simple reason for this. I wanted to have an outfield player who was in contact with all members of the team on the field. Ballack was delighted with the news and acknowledged the honour that had been bestowed on him. It makes me happy that he has such confidence in me and has given me so much responsibility. For me, it is a big honour to be captain of the national team and that is why I was very happy. The 2006 World Cup would be Balak's first major test. I have full confidence in Jürgen Klinsmann to send the team into the contest in great shape. I think that's most important. Excitement and passion must also play a role, as must the support from the audience. Losing the captaincy was the least of Oliver Kahn's concerns, as he was also in danger of losing his number one goalkeeper role. Manager Jürgen Klinsmann was keen to rotate that position between Kahn and Arsenal's Jens Lehmann. Lehmann had been competing for the spot for some time, but Oliver was always the more favoured of the two. Jens Lehmann, the same age as Kahn, also had an impressive record. He had won three league titles with three different teams. There have been open discussions between the goalkeepers and we've come to the conclusion that we should take a positive approach together. After all, we all have to work together on a daily basis. If you play in the national team, it's about giving all and to deal openly with each other. Should there be any incidents, they should pick up a phone and address it openly. That was the reason for this discussion. Klinsmann began to rotate Oliver and Jens, although Oliver remained the number one. Lehmann was playing well and did nothing to hurt his chances of winning the number one mantle. Oliver had held the position for almost eight years. An amazing achievement by anyone's standards. He'd become something of a cult figure in the German team. And replacing him would have some serious reverberations among the football community. Kahn had no doubts about his standing in the team.
The situation is as it is. I am the number one, and Jens is the challenger. And so I think there is no reason at all for me to have any doubts. But the issue remained, with former manager Franz Beckenbauer weighing in on the goalkeeping debate. A goalkeeper needs support and needs encouragement. Goalkeeping and defence are the most sensitive elements of a game. The defence has to know who is behind them. So, in my opinion, many people think differently. The goalkeeper issue should have been solved a long time ago. With the World Cup fast approaching, the situation was eventually resolved. Klinsmann announced on the 7th of April 2006 that Lehman was his number one choice goalkeeper for the World Cup. Oliver took the news well, despite his disappointment, and decided that he would stay on as the second choice keeper for the World Cup, which, as it turned out, would be his swan song. I think it's important for the national team that I take part in the 2006 World Cup. Despite this situation, which is not easy. Germany missed out on another final, and in a third place playoff, Klinsmann selected Oliver, who also captained the team in the absence of Michael Ballack. It was his last appearance for the national team. <laughs> Oliver Kahn was not the only dominant goalkeeper of his time. Among his celebrated peers were the likes of Italy's Gianluigi Buffon, Pierre Czech of Czechoslovakia, and Spanish hero Ike Casillas, all of whom are still playing today. Everyone, however, has their own opinion on who is the greatest. While Oliver Kahn is widely regarded as one of the all-time greats, many consider that Russian Soviet goalkeeper Lev Yashin takes out the title of the greatest of all time. He was voted best goalkeeper of the 20th century by the IFFHS and was also named the keeper of the century by FIFA in 2000. His contribution to the game was marked by naming an award after him. The Lev Yashin Award has been presented to the best goalkeeper of each World Cup. The award was first given at the USA World Cup in 1994. Oliver Kahn himself won the award in 2002. Yashin's professional career spanned 22 years from 1949 to 1971. He played for Dynamo Moscow and the Soviet national team. He was known for his superior athleticism in goal, imposing stature, amazing reflex saves, and for pioneering the idea of goalkeeper sweeping. He won five Soviet championships and three Soviet cups. He was an Olympic champion with the national team in Melbourne in 1956, and also a European champion in 1960. He played in three World Cups, in 1958, 1962 and 1968. The 1958 World Cup held in Sweden put Yashin on the map. He helped the Soviet Union make it to the quarterfinals. In the group stage against eventual winners Brazil, they lost 2-0. However, Yashin's goal-saving ability prevented the game from being a rout. He was promptly selected in the all-star team of that World Cup. Yashin's achievements are something every goalkeeper aspires to. His enduring legacy is testament to his outstanding career. One of his greatest achievements was being awarded the Order of Lenin in 1967. The Order of Lenin, named after the leader of the Russian October Revolution, was the highest decoration bestowed by the Soviet Union. Off the field, Oliver Kahn was known as a family man being the father of two children with wife Simone. However, in 2003, the couple split. Six years later, it was announced that they were finally getting divorced. Highlighting his cult figure status in Germany, he was the subject of a song by German pop group, The Prinzen, called Oli Kahn. The song became one of their biggest hits. It was later covered by another popular German band, Die Torten Horsen. In 2010, Kahn was the recipient of the ISPO Trophy. Presented by the International Sport Business Network, the award honours top athletes, who, after ending their career, continue to act as major role models for today's youth. Past winners include fellow footballers Pelé and Franz Beckenbauer. Among his exploits off the field, Oliver has written a book called Number One. 
In the book, he reflects on the challenges and situations that put him on the edge during his career as a goalkeeper and explains how he dealt with them. The book is called Number One because I've been wearing this number on my back throughout my life on the goalkeeper's jersey. But also because for the past 10 years, I had to be number one. Not just as a goalkeeper, playing for Bayern means always being number one. It is always about winning the Bundesliga. It is about winning the Champions League if possible. It is definitely about winning the German FA trophy. So when you join the national team, it is exactly the same situation, because the national team has the same expectations. It wants to be world class, number one. Oliver has kept himself busy since retiring by becoming involved in various youth projects in Germany. Among these is the I Can Do It tour with Oliver Kahn, an initiative of the German Child Protection Agency, which saw Oliver visiting youngsters from 12 different Bavarian schools. He's also kept up a high profile as a television personality. He appeared on the Chinese TV show, I Never Give Up, The Khan Principle, searching for the next generation of football goalkeepers. As an avid fan of golf, he has also become an active ambassador, lobbying for Germany to host the 2018 Ryder Cup, arguably the world's most prestigious golf tournament. He currently works as a football commentator for German national games on German TV station ZDF and promotes his football development projects in Asia. Oliver has stated his desire to avoid the fatal error of becoming complacent and thinking that because you were once a star footballer that things are going to fall in your lap. That's why he has started an MBA course which will keep him busy for the next two years. Rumours have also abounded that he would take over the manager's position at Bayern Munich, a job no less stressful than goalkeeping. Whether those rumours are true or false, experts all over the country are predicting that he will have an official position in German football soon. If he were to take up a position at his former club, his NBA would certainly stand him in good stead for the role. Whatever he chooses to do in the future, Oliver Kahn's legacy on the pitch will continue to precede him. No doubt his off-field exploits will add another dimension to his remarkable story. Over his career, he amassed a plethora of individual honours. As well as being named the IFFHS World Best Goalkeeper three times and Best European Goalkeeper four times, he won the FIFA World Cup Golden Ball and the Yashin Award. He was also named in the FIFA 100 list. Although he has thrown himself into his off-field endeavours since retiring, his fans continue to remember his amazing skills and achievements on the pitch. There is no question that the story of Khan's exploits will be told for years to come.